coffee. Mm, the first sip is always the best. Hey everyone, this is Phil from Northern Wild Harvest. And right now we are in the middle of the Yukon Territory Wilderness hunting wild morel mushrooms on the previous year's forest fires. So today is going to be an interesting day because we are going back down the Yukon's historic silver trail. The Yukon is known for its Klondike gold rush, but there was also a silver rush about 20 years later, and the capital city of that silver rush was the small town of Kino, Kino City. They call it a city, but it only has about 15 to 25 permanent residents. I think closer to 15 permanent residents. And it holds a mining museum as well as a lot of old historic artifacts left over from the gold and the silver rush era. I've actually spent time in that area three years ago harvesting wild morel mushrooms on a wildfire. So I know that area quite well. Our first stop of the day is going to be to drive down the silver trail to a very small wildfire near an area called the Hanson Lakes. And it's only about 400 or so hectares, but I've picked mushrooms in that area and it did really, really well last time. So the real question is, are we too early and what is the access? So we need to go down the silver trail, off the silver trail, down this other side road and try to get into that fire. And then if we have time, we would like to go and stop by in the actual small city, city of Kino afterwards and just check things out. It's known as the Yukon's weirdest place. Let's get into another foraging adventure. On today's adventure, Alec, Hey yo. And Alex are joining me. Back at camp here, Randy will be security guarding guard. The, guarding the homestead again. And bushcrafting. Bushcrafting and making dinners and what have you. And he'll be drying some of yesterday's mushrooms. Not that there's very many. So he'll be drying them. He'll be getting dried. Dried out, losing their moisture. We can't leave our camp unguarded because thieves and bears. Load up, come back with some mushrooms for me to dry. Now, if you're a new viewer to our channel, Randy here is one of the original veteran morel pickers in the Yukon. And here he is in 2023, still coming up all the way to this northern wilderness to pick wild mushrooms. We're crossing the Stewart River and we're going to be turning right onto the Silver Trail today. It's a tiny little grizzly bear, isn't it? It's a baby grizz. Best. Oh, where's the mom? All right, we're getting close to Kino here and to our burn. So in the valley, you can see over there is the burn that I was harvesting from three years ago. And then right there, that small little burn, way in the distance, that is the burn we're going to. And it's got a nice mix of trees. It's not entirely muskeg. And there's some needle, orange needles. So that looks pretty good. It's small, but the future will tell the story about Randy's best burn he ever harvested. And it was a similar size to this one. Best season he ever had on only 400 hectares. So you just never know. A couple cool things on the side of the road here. We are here. This is the historic Wind River Trail. This would have been a dog sled route through these mountains. I'll be up to the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Now you see these little survival shelters scattered throughout this area of the Yukon. Um, basically they're here in case you get stuck out in the winter and you're gonna die. So you, you climb into one of these, try to hold the door on and you light the little barrel stove. These stoves aren't the, the greatest, but I've used them before. And then uh, you try to survive the night. So you can see this one's not in the greatest of shape. There's some bullet holes or puncture holes in the side of the chimney pipe. Today we're going to be heading down past this survival shack. I did come down this road three years ago. It's definitely a side road off of an already very remote highway. And we need to get up not too far into here. So we're actually going to be traveling on the first section of the Wind River Trail. It's not overly well maintained and it is a winter route. So only this beginning section is a road. Already this road is looking a little bit skeptical here. You're good here. We 
spotted a small pocket burn that is not marked on any of the fire maps. It's a kilometer or so away from our target burn, but it looks like it could be more recent. You can see the 450 hectare burn in the distance, which we plan to scout after checking the small burn near where we have parked. So we're not seeing any mushrooms in this first pocket, but the signs are here that this could produce. One thing you're not seeing at all is there's no green plants coming up yet. Could mean this fire burned really late last summer. So it didn't have a chance after burning last year before winter hit for grasses and different plants to get started. So usually fires like this will produce a little bit later. Um, all the signs are here though. Moisture in the ground, fire cups, moss, there's liverwort around. These willow shoots, you can tell that this is just from this spring. It's green still, it hasn't gone woody. So this didn't have a chance to create any growth before the winter. No bud scale scars on the stem of this willow here. So that's pretty much a guarantee that this fire burned later in the season. In the other fires where there is morels just starting, you can see the bud scale scars on the willow at like, you know, six inches or so, and then the green growth from this season on top of that. Probably burnt right up until the snow started falling. So if you look on the map where we are, the closest town is Mayo. So it's about 50 kilometers back on that long dirt road. And between here and there, there's basically nothing. And Mayo is only about 200 residents or so, two to 300 residents, I believe. So beyond that, the next town would be really like Dawson City, which is about four or 500 kilometers from here. And it's only like a thousand permanent residents as well. So this is real wilderness. I mean, just over those mountains, there's still unexplored areas of like true frontier. We're just on the cusp of that, uh, that part of the world, part of Canada, where there's still unexplored areas for the most part it's been mapped but there's little valleys and creeks and ponds that have never been walked on in modern time okay so this fire does look like it has potential we have seen a few morels and they've got a couple decent sized ones but it's just not a lot yet so when the late stage fire morels come in in a few weeks this area could be a lot more interesting but we are going to take one more look bonus it's a nice one yeah how are they looking oh yeah they're not looking so bad they're looking pretty nice so as you can see they're just starting just a small one Morel. Nice little morel. If you're a morel picker in the eastern United States or eastern North America, the species that's common out there, the Morcella americana, has a much longer stem. The species we get in the burn have shorter stems, so we do not take more than a quarter inch of stem. First decent showing, and they're all a little small. So there's maybe 15 around this tree. Two or three are big enough to pick. It's not a great early flush. Quality is kind of, it's good, but it's not great. And they don't look like they're growing very quickly. I'd say this fire isn't where it needs to be right now to take it seriously at this stage because there's so many small ones. However, there is some good signs. Clustering, grouping. More that they're all too small, but I'm gonna waypoint this because look. Babies are coming. It's unreal. That is a good flush starting. 
Now the question is, is it gonna spread out or is that the first spot flushing, you know? If it does that in all of these tree wells and they get mature, then we're talking. Just need to sit here and wait. <laughs> yeah, we'll just sit here for four days, five days, and then watch them grow. That's nice. Nowhere else around here like that. The frustrating part is, it was a two hour drive to get here from our camp. That's four hours of driving and fuel and time just to come look. Nice little line. Good quality. A couple of these. More babies. That pop that you're on, Phil, goes right over to here. Yeah. It's a nice one. Like a sudden line. It's the wrong kind of Yukon gold you'd want to find out in the bush. Oh, there's is that Alec? No, no, it's not Alec. Right. So it could just be that some of these tree wells got a little bit more sunlight, a little bit more warmth. They started, the other ones haven't quite kicked off yet. But right now we're thinking like we'll come back here in about a week. So in case you're wondering, we are above the mine here. So we're above all of the drainage and the tailings of the mine. That said, when we were harvesting here three years ago, we were below the mine. And we actually had a mycologist in our group and she took some samples of morels to go get them checked for heavy metals. And the results were no concern of heavy metals in the morels. So that was interesting because we were a little worried about it. We wanted to know. She took them out for a sample. Nothing to be alarmed by. So I'm not sure if that means that they filter out those heavy metals or we were just in a good spot. It's hard to say, but it's something interesting to think about. Regardless, we're well above where the mine is, out of range, so it's not a concern for this fire. So we're gonna start driving out on this road and then we're gonna to head to the small town of Kino. Check out the uh, mining museum. Here we are in Kino City. This is what they call a city in the Yukon. It's a city at one point. We're in Kino and we're gonna have a beer at the Kino bar. Yeah, that's huge, eh? Yeah, it's a bigger version of the stove we had last year. Hey, that looks like one of the ones I picked up today. The one that didn't have the color in it? Now there's an old pack board. Old pack board. Trapper Nelson with the bag. Look, here's a diamond willow chair. Oh, Never had a goblin steak before? So 
lot of these artifacts actually came from Dawson. I think a lot of them were used during the gold rush and then when that dried up, they reused a lot of things for the silver rush. Big old wheels. Well, hope you enjoyed this little look at the small town of Kino. We're going to head back to camp now, down the old Silver Trail. Thanks for watching. Join us in the next episode where we have a full-scale day of morale harvesting and load up our pack boards. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to see more content or follow along with the season. You can find each of our mushroom seasons organized into playlists on the playlist tab of our channel. Our online store is also linked in the description of the video if you want to show your support. Thanks for watching.